Islamic inheritance jurisprudence is a field of Islamic jurisprudence Arabic, fuq that deals with inheritance, a topic that is prominently dealt with in the Quran. It is often called mirath, and its branch of Islamic law is technically known as ilm al-farid Arabic, the science of the ordained quotas. All Muslims are to follow and implement the rules of Islamic inheritance. Inheritance and the Quran The Quran introduced a number of different rights and restrictions on matters of inheritance, including what were at that time general improvements to the treatment of women and family life. The Quran also presented efforts to fix the laws of inheritance, and thus forming a complete legal system. This development was in contrast to pre-Islamic societies where rules of inheritance varied considerably. They do, however, also differ from ongoing secular egalitarian improvements since that time, up to, though principally in, the modern era. Furthermore, the Quran introduced additional heirs that were not entitled inheritance in pre-Islamic times, mentioning nine relatives specifically of which six were female and three were male. The laws of inheritance in the Quran also included other male relatives, such as the husband and half-brothers from the mother's side, who were excluded from inheritance in old customs. The heirs mentioned in the Quran are the mother, father, husband, wife, daughter, brother who shares the same mother, full sister, sister who shares the same mother, and consanguini sister. In general, the Quran improved the status of women by identifying their share of inheritance in clear terms. It also completely forbade the practice of inheriting widows. 419 Orientalist Joseph Schacht states that. This is not meant as a regular legal ordinance, but is part of the Quranic endeavor to improve the position of women. The Quran does not explicitly mention the shares of male relatives, such as the decedent's son, but provides the rule that the son's share must be twice that of the daughter's. Muslim theologians explain this aspect of inheritance by looking at Islamic law in its entirety, which bestows the responsibility and accountability on men to provide safety, protection, and sustenance to women. Quran 434. One explanation of why a daughter is entitled to only half that of the son is that Islam decrees that women, upon marriage, are entitled to a dowry from the husband, in addition to any provision by her parents. It is thereafter the husband's obligation to care for and maintain his wife and the dowry is, therefore, essentially an advance of inheritance rights from her husband's estate which returns to his possession after the formalities over. In addition to the above changes, the Quran grants testamentary powers to Muslims in disposing their property, Quran, 2-180-182, 2-240, 433, 5-106-107 in their will, called wasayya, Muslims are allowed to give out a maximum of one-third of their property. Muslims are also encouraged to give money to the orphans and poor if they are present during the division of property. Topic. Later development The Quran contains only three verses 411, 412 and 4 to 176 which give specific details of inheritance and shares, in addition to few verses dealing with testamentary power. It has also been reported in Hadith that Muhammad allotted great importance to the laws of inheritance and ordered his followers to learn and teach them. Muslim jurists used these verses as a starting point to expound the laws of inheritance even further using hadith, as well as methods of juristic reasoning, like qiyas. In later periods, large volumes of work have been written on the subject. This amalgamation of old agnetic customs and Islamic law led to a number of problems and controversies that Muslim jurists have solved in different ways. Through the use of deductive reasoning kiyas, Muslim jurists added three additional heirs, the paternal grandfather, maternal grandmother, and agnetic granddaughter. These heirs, if entitled to inherit, are given their fixed shares and the remaining estate is inherited by the residuaries asaba. In some cases, they have also upheld the rule of men having twice the share of women in circumstances not readily mentioned in the Quran, and tried to deal with complex cases in a variety of different contexts. This led to some minor differences between jurisprudence schools of the Sunni madhabs. Also, the laws of inheritance for Twelver Shia, despite being based on the same principles, differ in a number of features due to the rejection of certain accounts of hadith and based on their understanding of certain events in early Islam. On the other hand, the system of inheritance of the Qarahit Abadis and Zaydis closely resemble that of the Sunni system. 
In modern Muslim countries, usually a mixture of different schools of jurisprudence including Shia is in effect, in addition to a number of important reforms to the traditional system. The main achievements of such modern systems was the codification of inheritance laws. <laughs> Details of inheritance in Islamic law Inheritance is considered as an integral part of Sharia law. Muslims inherit from one another as stated in the Quran, Quran 4-7 hence, there is a legal share for relatives of the decedent in his estate and property. The major rules of inheritance are detailed in Quran, Hadith and Fiqh. When a Muslim dies there are four duties which need to be performed. They are Pay funeral and burial expenses Paying debts of the deceased Determine the value, will of the deceased which can only be a maximum of one-third of the property. Distribute the remainder of estate and property to the relatives of the deceased according to Sharia law, therefore, it is necessary to determine the relatives of the deceased who are entitled to inherit, and their shares. These laws take greater prominence in Islam because of the restriction placed on the testator a person who makes a will. Islamic law places two restrictions on the testator to whom he or she can bequeath his or her wealth. The amount that he or she can bequeath which must not exceed one-third of the overall wealth. Topic. Different types of heirs Heirs referred to as primary heirs are always entitled to a share of the inheritance, they are never totally excluded. These primary heirs consist of the spouse relict, both parents, the son and the daughter. All remaining heirs can be totally excluded by the presence of other heirs. But under certain circumstances, other heirs can also inherit as residuaries, namely the father, paternal grandfather, daughter, agnetic granddaughter, full sister, consanguini sister and mother. Those who inherit are usually confined to three groups. Quota heirs al-far, usually include daughters, parents, grandparents, husband and wife, wives, brothers and sisters, and others. This group usually take a designated share or quota of the estates. Members of the asaba residuaries, usually a combination of male and sometimes female relatives that inherit as residuaries after the shares of the quota heirs is distributed. In case a person leaves no direct relatives and there is no usaba, his property is cheats to the state treasury, Beit al-Mal. <laughs> Rules of inclusion and exclusion In Islamic law, only relatives with a legitimate blood relationship to the deceased are entitled to inherit. Thus, illegitimate children and adopted children have no shares in inheritance. In general, a full brother will exclude a half-brother who shares a common father, consanguini brother, but not a half-brother who shares a common mother. In cases where a deceased man leaves a pregnant woman, the unborn child's share will be reserved. Also a woman during the time of waiting after divorce is considered a wife of the deceased for purposes of inheritance, there are even further rules of exclusion and inclusion of different relatives. The only practical situations which may cause disqualification are differences of religion and homicide. But schools of Islamic jurisprudence differed whether a Muslim can inherit from a non-Muslim or not. All the jurists agree that intentional or unjustifiable killing would exclude a person from inheritance. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Women and inheritance. In Islam, women are entitled the right of inheritance. In general circumstances, though not all, Islam allots women half the share of inheritance available to men who have the same degree of relation to the decedent. For example, where the decedent has both male and female children, a son's share is double that of a daughter's. Additionally, the sister of a childless man inherits half of his property upon his death, while a brother of a childless woman inherits all of her property. However, this principle is not universally applicable, and there are other circumstances where women might receive equal shares to men. For example, the share of the mother and father of a decedent who leaves children behind. Also the share of a brother who shares the same mother is equal to the share of a sister who shares the same mother, as do the shares of their descendants. There are some who say women are entitled to equal inheritance in Islam. Sometimes, women get double the share as that of men. For example, if there are only parents and husband, husband will receive half, father gets one-sixth and mother gets two-sixths. 
This is according to Ibn e Abbas's interpretation of verses 11, 12 of Surah and Nisa, Quran 411, 12. Also, the Quran does not discriminate between men and women in cases of Kalala relation. Kalala describes a person who leaves behind neither parents nor children, it also means all the relatives of a deceased except his parents and children, and it also denotes the relationships which are not through the deceased's parents or children. Islamic scholars hold that the original reasons for these differences are the responsibilities that are allotted to spouses. A husband in Islam must use his inheritance to support his family while a wife has no support obligations. Additionally, Arab society traditionally practiced the custom of bride price or dower rather than dowry, i.e., the man paid a gift to his wife or her family upon marriage, rather than the opposite, placing a financial burden on men where none existed on women. This custom was continued but changed materially by Islam. The divine injunction stipulated that the dowry mar is due to the wife only not her family. It can also be deferred thereby reducing the burden if the husband is unable to afford the requested dowry at the time of the marriage. The wife can defer it till a stipulated date or it can become a debt on the estate when the husband dies, for, and give their dowries willingly to women as an obligation, but if they, of their own accord, remit a portion of the dowry, you may enjoy it with pleasure. The role of Islamic inheritance in the development of Islamic mathematics The Islamic law of inheritance served as an impetus behind the development of algebra derived from the Arabic al by Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi and other medieval Islamic mathematicians. Al-Khwarizmi's Hasab al-Jab wal-Muqabala, the foundational text of algebra, devoted its third and longest chapter to solving problems related to Islamic inheritance using algebra. He formulated the rules of inheritance as linear equations, hence his knowledge of quadratic equations was not required. al hasr a mathematician from the Maghreb North Africa, specializing in Islamic inheritance jurisprudence during the 12th century, developed the modern symbolic mathematical notation for fractions, where the numerator and denominator are separated by a horizontal bar. The dust ciphers he used are also nearly identical to the digits used in the current Western Arabic numerals. These same digits and fractional notation appear soon after in the work of Fibonacci in the 13th century. In the 15th century, Abu al Hasan ibn Ali al Khalasadi, a specialist in Islamic inheritance jurisprudence, used a mathematical notation for algebra which took the first steps toward the introduction of algebraic symbolism. He represented mathematical symbols using characters from the Arabic alphabet. Topic. See also Women and Islam Mathematics in Medieval Islam Topic. References Topic. External links Division of inheritance according to Quran Inheritance in Islam